Hey everybody, Mo here, and welcome to Endure Spiders for Dummies. This is another video in my Deck Guides for Dummies series, and in this video I'm going to be covering the Endure Spiders deck, that's Railyard and Shadow Isle. So, just like every other deck, we're going to go over things you need to know about the deck before you play it, general tips on the deck, and then I'll give you guys a mulligan guide, and then I'll link to my Discord that'll have more in-depth matchups. So what is Endure Spiders, and what does it do? So, just quickly, if you've never seen this deck before, Endure Spiders is a deck named after and evolves around the combo between They Who Endure and Atrocity. So They Who Endure is a 6-mana 1-1 one, one that reads, whenever an ally unit dies, give this creature plus 1 plus 1. And then Atrocity is you sacrifice a targeted creature and you deal that much damage to anything. Meaning, you want to play a whole bunch of spiders so you, this deck you play a whole bunch of one ones a whole bunch of small creatures throughout the game your small creatures die maybe they're blocking really large creatures or maybe your opponent's playing you know avalanches and board wipes and then eventually on turn seven or eight you now have this six mana 15 15 or six mana 20 20 that your opponent has to figure out how to deal with and not only it, can you attack them with this 15 15 or 20 20 with overwhelm by the way so it really doesn't matter if they have one one creature they have to have a big creature to block it but if they try to kill it with the vengeance you can instant speed atrocity blow your creature up and then just deal 15 damage to their face or 20 damage to their face and that's really the combo that makes this deck very special and that's really why this entire deck is built so things to know about the deck before you play it uh, for starters, it's not a super flashy deck. It doesn't have any crazy good matchups, and you're not hitting with fancy elusive units, you're not casting 10 spells a turn like an Ezreal deck. But the deck is very, very, very consistent, and is very, very good at doing what it's supposed to do. You play small units, they die, you live long enough, you play a really big they who endure, you either just hit them with it, or you atrocity their face, and you win. It's very very simple but the deck itself is not fast so you have to have patience and all this other stuff we're going to cover and hopefully by the end of this video you guys will be comfortable enough with the deck that i'll see you in master's rank with it so this deck doesn't have many favorable matchups i believe it's only super favored against elusives and against aggro decks however it has a really good game plan and can win against every matchup if you play it correctly so even though it's not favored against Ezreal Karma, if you play it correctly, you can still win. It still has a good game plan against every single deck. And it doesn't have any really, really bad matchups, which is why it's my personal favorite to bring to tournaments. I bring it to a tournament with me every weekend because it's very nice and just consistent at what it needs to do. This deck is has just about everything in it. It has card draw, removal, it has really strong units, and this allows very advanced players to change game plans on the fly very easily. One moment you could be on the defensive side just blocking with all of your spiders, casting, you know, make three spiders card to block because you're on defense, and then all of a sudden you top deck your endure, or you level up your release one turn that you're not expecting, and now all of a sudden you're the aggressor, and you can just take the wheel and force your opponent to play at your pace, and you're controlling the game from now on. You can just change the game on the fly if you know how to play the deck correctly. So while we're on the subject of playing the deck correctly, here are some general tips for the deck. Uh, the first is don't worry about your units dying. Your units aren't very big, and if your opponent board wipes you, unlike other spider aggro decks or just other decks in general, if you get board wiped, that's actually kind of good for you. It just means that Eventually, when you play your They Who Endure or you draw it, it's just going to be that much bigger. Chump block all the time. This just, if you have your opponent swinging at you with a bunch of bannermen beefed up, yoked up, 7-7 seven, seven units, don't be afraid. Just block it with the 1-1. One, one. Because your goal is just to make it to the end game. Your goal is to live long enough to play your They Who Endure and then atrocity their face or make your endure so big that you have to attack them force them to block or have a kill spell and then you just respond and kill them with it so as long as you're not dying you're winning in this matchup 
So don't get too aggressive with your atrocity combo. If you don't need atrocity, don't play atrocity. If your unit is a 15-15 and your opponent's biggest creature is a 5-5, just and your opponent's at like 5 health, you don't need to atrocity them. You can just attack with your they who endure. Because if they're not conceding, they think they have a game plan to not die. So what you want to do is you attack with your they who endure, then you want to force them to either vengeance or use whatever kill spell or trick they have. And then while their trick or kill spell is on the stack, then if you really feel like you need to, then that's when you atrocity. Don't get super excited and be like, my opponent has no units on board and I have a 15-15 a day who endure. Oh, let me just atrocity. No, there's no reason to do any of that. Just attack them first. Force them to have an answer. You don't need to atrocity if your opponent doesn't have any blockers or it looks like they have a way to stop your attack. Look out for Frostbite and Purify. This card, these cards will completely just hose your They Who Endure really badly and make your game plan just completely crumble. If you go for Atrocity on your 50-50 super humongous They Who Endure and then your opponent has a Frostbite, well, good job, buddy. You just, you played yourself. Or if you go to Atrocity or swing in with your big They Who Endure and then they just Purify it, congratulations. You just atrocity to 1-1 one, one, or you just swung into a garen with your 1-1 one, one, and it feels not good so try and play around those as best as you can i know it's not super easy especially purify since they can just do it at burst speed whenever they want it's not the easiest thing to do so i probably try and wait until i either have two they who endures to force them to have two answers or two purifies or i just try and find a turn that they're tapped out because they who endure only cost six mana it's one of the very few combos where you can actually play the creature and play atrocity at the same turn for a one turn kill so maybe look for a, an opening of where your opponent has used up all of their mana for the turn you probably aren't going to get your opponent to zero hp with spiders you're playing a bunch of one one spiders and if your opponent dies to those they're really bad and you would have won with a starter deck so don't get greedy. Open attack, even if it means you only hit them for 2 damage or 3 damage at most. Eventually, your opponent will have to kill off your units, and your endure will be a 15-15 or really big, and you'll realize that even though you only hit your opponent twice, and it was for 2 damage and then 3 damage, you still have lethal with the 15-15 they who endure. So there's no reason to get super aggressive and super greedy and try and play cards on your turn and give your opponent priority so they can then avalanche you or they can put a blocker up or they can do something to stop your attack. Two damage is better than no damage. And sometimes, you know, the difference between 17 health and 15 health is the difference in winning the game. Try to use Skitterer on defensive turns. Doing this will save you a lot of damage against decks like Bannerman, where they're typically swinging in with 3-3s or 4-4s. It'll negate up to 5 damage depending on how many units they have on the board. And against smaller decks, like against aggressive decks, it could potentially just take away their entire combat. If your opponent has a board full of just 2-2s two or 3-3s, three and you play Skitterer, you just took away 6 damage, and like I said, if their unit is just a little 2-1, they're not going to run a board of 2-1s into your board of, you know, 3-3s three or decently sized creatures for absolutely no value. They get no good trades there, and that can be a huge swing and your advantage bar. Next thing is gonna be look for optimal trades to gain board advantage. So if you played Hearthstone, you know that board advantage is really, really big in that game. And you know exactly how important it is. Well, this deck plays exactly like this game is Hearthstone. You wanna fight for board state. You don't care too much about their health. Like I said, if you can just hit them a couple times for five damage or so total, you're good to go. You basically just wanna fight for board state attempt to kill your opponent's creatures and even if you lose yours that's fine even if it just feels like you're trading evenly and you're not gaining board advantage and you're just breaking even just remember that eventually you're going to draw they who endure and then you'll get the biggest reward possible so the next part of the guide just like on all my other decks for dummies video is going to be covering general mulligan guides and of course, like always, I'll have a more in-depth guide on each matchup in my Discord that you can join by using the Discord link below to gain access to not just this deck's guides, but guides to all the other decks I've made of High Masters Levels Knowledge, and it's all absolutely free. So just a quick mulligan tip. 
cards I always keep in my opening hand with this deck are Elise and They Who Endure. So because of that, I'm not going to involve them in every single list below. I'll just give you the reasons right here. The reason is Elise is just a very, very powerful play on turn two against any deck. And it's your best on-curve play for turn two. Not very many decks want to see an Elise on turn two. They might have answers for it, but none of them say, man, I really hope my opponent plays an Elise on turn two because the card is that powerful. And just having Fearsome on turn two, you're going to at least get two damage in against almost any other deck. And as far as They Who Endure, it's fairly simple. Half of your finishing combo is They Who Endure. It's just by keeping They Who Endure in your hand, you only need to draw Atrocity. If, you know, if needed, you might not even need Atrocity. You might just be able to hit them with the 15-15. And if you don't draw Atrocity, you can still play it for value on turn like 6-8 to eight as a 10-10 ten ten or something, you know, a little bit smaller just to be able to block your 7-7 seven seven Garens and 7-7 seven seven Sithrys and stuff like that. Or maybe you just need to pressure the board a little bit. Or you have two of them. You know, you can play two 10-10s ten and that's perfectly fine. So enough of that. Let's get into the actual matchups. As always, I'm just going to be going off of Mobilitics tier list and I'm just going to be covering the S and A tier decks because especially with this deck, you'll start to notice a pattern very, very, very quickly and you'll understand what I mean once I get towards the end of it. So for Bannerman decks, you just want a mulligan for units. Any unit will really do the trick, to be honest. You're kind of just wanting to block and eventually just play Day Who Endure. So key cards here are going to be Brute Awakening, No More Than One Vile Feast, Thresh, and Ruination are the key cards. So I hope you guys start to notice this pattern. Pay attention. For Ezreal Karma, you're going to want to keep Glimpse Beyond, Abros and Sentry, and Atrocity. For Noxus Ezreal, you're going to want to keep Glimpse Beyond, Avros and Sentry, Atrocity. For Karina, you're going to want to keep Glimpse Beyond, Avros and Sentry, Atrocity, for Spooky Karma, you're going to want to keep Glimpse, Sentry, Atrocity. And for War Mother Control, you're going to want to keep Glimpse, Sentry, Atrocity. So for all of the control decks, because your deck is so straightforward and so consistent, you basically just have one pattern, and that's Mulligan for value cards that can help you get to your They Who Endure quickly. So you want to keep Glimpse Beyond because it negates a removal spell, and gets you value by refilling your hand. Sentry, same thing. It applies a tiny bit of pressure, but also just refills itself in the hand. And Atrocity, because you don't have to worry about your pressure coming from your opponent as much, so keeping a six card spell in your opening hand is fine, because it's half of your combo. And all you're really needing to do in these decks is just draw your combo pieces, and you eventually just win the game. You just have to find an opening, play Endure, play Atrocity on them, and then you win. Maybe you find the turn where they War Mothers. You know, they tapped out, then you go, okay, you have 12 mana, which means I probably have 12 mana. They who Endure Atrocity, boom, you win the game. If it's, you know, as Karma, on turn 9, a lot of players like to play their Karma the turn before they level up. Well, you know, that's half of their mana right there. That only leaves them with 4 mana. At worst, they could just bounce your They Who Endure. So, that's, you know, pretty good time. And you just want to Try to find the best possible time to Atrocity without getting greedy, like I said before. So those were all the control matchups. Now, for more specific matchups, like Elusives, you're going to want to keep Thresh, Vile Feast, and Crawling Sensation, and Withering Whale. The reasons for this are Thresh is a challenge unit. Challenger is really good against Elusives. Vile Feast kills the two ones in his deck, and, and if you get two Vile Feast, you can kill a Zed... But most of the reason is just to kill all the 2-1 units. Same reason for Withering Whale, it kills all the 2-1 units. And Crawling Sensation, because it levels up your Elise. And Elise gives your Spiders Challenger, which, like I said previously, is really good against Elusive units. You don't have to worry about Zed in this matchup, because you have so many Spiders and 1-1s one above ground that Zed will never get through. So you basically just want to pull all the Elusive units out from under the ground. In the Mirror match, you're going to want to Mulligan for Atrocity, Withering Whale, and Pack Mentality. Atrocity, for the same reasons as uh, control decks, you basically just want the combo in hand because you want to be able to fire it off anytime you see an opening. Like if your opponent plays their Endure and get kind of greedy with it, that allows you to play your Endure and then Atrocity. Or maybe, you know, you can play your Endure first because you know yours is bigger and now you can do Atrocity. Withering Whale, because it just completely board wipes your opponent and stops all of their momentum 
and it really helps you fight for board. Keep in mind, this does make their endure bigger, but if you have a board full of spiders, and so do they, and you Withering Whale them, you now get to open attack for like 8 damage or something crazy like that. So that's really big. And then Skitterer is also really good in this matchup that I forgot to mention, for the reason of it can completely kill your opponent's attack. If they have a board full of 1-1s, one -ones, you Skitterer, they're not going to attack with 0-1 creatures. And then Pack Mentality is the last card. For very obvious reasons, the only reason Pack Mentality is in this deck is... So in the mirror match, they're playing X1 spiders. You're playing X1 spiders. You pack mentality. You give all of your units trample, and you trample over your opponent's one health spiders. Now against spider aggro and just general aggro and burn decks, you're going to want to keep all of your vial feasts, all of your withering whales, and then skitterer. Vial feasts and withering whales, pretty, you know, self-explanatory. They gain life while also board wiping and killing your opponent. And skitterer, like I said, if you can play it on a good defensive term, it can stop things like Draven. It can stop you know, any really two power creature attacking you. So again, as you can tell, the mulligan strategies were very simple. And just a quick recap of the entire deck, you're gonna wanna have patience, fight for board control, don't get greedy, don't get too aggressive, stay alive until you play Endure, and then Atrocity. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video on Endure Spiders for Dummies. Make sure if you did enjoy it to leave a like on the video and leave a comment letting me know what deck you want to see next, what deck guide you want for maybe, you know, your favorite deck. Let me know. I stream on Twitch Monday through Friday. I post videos on YouTube Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So go follow me on Twitch, subscribe here, join the Discord below for full notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'd rather be